Stuart Webb has been involved in building, scaling and selling businesses and mentoring owners and managers to grow profits and manage their teams to dramatically increase business value following a career as a research virologist. Mm. Sounds interesting, right? And he has his own program called Five Simple Steps to Growing Your Business, the proven formula for building your business. And apart from that, he's also the host of It's Not Rocket Science, Five Questions Over Coffee podcast. So I'm going to publish both the links in the show notes or the episode description. And I strongly recommend you to visit the links and get the maximum wisdom from Stuart. As you prepare to delve into our conversation on the topic at hand, a scientist's way of mentoring startup CEOs, here's an exciting twist. Let us tickle Stuart's brain first. Stuart, <laughs> get ready <laughs> for a rapid fire round of random words. I'll mention a few and I'd love to hear the first thing that comes to your brain okay. without thinking much. Okay, let's okay. dive in. Okay. Here comes my first word, curiosity. Human beings. Invention. The internet. Future. Optimistic. Book. Uh, I My favorite book is one called Great Business Adventures. Movie. Uh, probably uh, something from Mission Impossible. Startup. Uh, Amazon. Alien. Yeah, not a big alien fan. <laughs> <laughs> Name. Uh, five questions over coffee. <laughs> Leader. Uh, probably Bill Gates. And the last one is research. That takes me back to curiosity. Awesome. And Stuart, this is one of the finest rapid fire rounds I've ever had on my show. Thank you for participating so sportively. Really appreciate it. And folks, welcome to the Guiding Watch podcast series, where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future. I'm your host, Navin Samala. My mission is to make the world a better place through valuable discussions that add value, not only to your life, but also to your career. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stuart, hearty welcome to The Guiding Voice. And I cannot wait any more to get into this super thrilling conversation with you. And first of all, hearty welcome. And how are you doing today? Naveen, thank you really so much for that introduction and for that rapid fire round. I'm glad we had so much fun with it. And uh, <laughs> thank you for the uh, for the great uh, opportunity to be on this. I think it's a great thing you're doing, sharing your thoughts, sharing interesting pe- people is uh, a guiding voice to help people not only with their business journey, but with their career journey. I think it's a great idea. Brilliant. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. And also th- thank you for, for being part of this journey. And it's a pleasure to host you today. Let's get started with your success mantra, Stuart. So please share with us the top three things that have attributed or contributed to your success so far. So it's interesting that I started very young when uh, when I got into cycling. And I was uh, one of the most important lessons I learned when I was cycling was that uh, although I wasn't always the fastest in the race. I always needed to be ready to seize an opportunity to, to that came up. You know, if you're in a race and somebody else makes a small stumble or you're they're they're not as well prepared as you, you can take advantage of that situation. And and that's how I sometimes managed to win races. I wasn't always the fastest, but maybe the person ahead of me made a small mistake on the day and I was able to take advantage of that and it meant that I had to be fit and I had to keep my mind sharp and I had to keep watching and scanning the situation around me to take advantage of those situations and that's something I've translated into my business career it's about being prepared constantly scanning the environments constantly looking around you seeing what's happening noticing changes and taking advantages of those things when they crop up so that's I think the first lesson that I'd like to sort of um, pass on and then you mentioned and, and you know your first word in the five uh, the, the five quick fire round was curiosity yeah. And and for me, uh, I learned a lot of lessons through my scientific career because uh, I was curious. I was always curious about something and I was always trying to sort of unpick it. Um, mm-hmm. I spent my time looking at persistent human viruses. Um, 
And I learned as a scientist, you stand on the shoulders of giants. You don't, mm. you don't achieve anything on your own. It was Isaac Newton that once said that he stands on the shoulders of giants. And I've always borrowed great ideas from other people who are potentially even more successful than me. And I do so proudly because as a scientist, I learned that the great value is working with and attributing to others the success mm-hmm. that you get because you have you have worked with them. Um, and I learned the great value of teams. You know, I worked in some fabulous teams. I built teams that I needed to to exploit the strengths that I have, but I, I knew I have weaknesses, so I'd exploit the, 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 the strengths of others around me to make a great team. So if there's one thing that I would pass on to anybody entrepreneurs, you need to learn how to spot and build on the strengths of people around you. And use mm-hmm. those strengths. You know, I, I always say to to CEOs that I'm working with today, um, you know, are you prepared to acknowledge the great strengths of the team around you and let them be better than you are in areas where you're potentially weak? So I think those are the sort of the lessons that I'd, that I'd pass on at this stage, Naveen. Wow. The last one is uh, super impactful. I think we can learn from what others have already done. I think <laughs> that's why they say, we have to be associated with uh, people that are smarter than us. Oh, I yes. I think you have learned it so early, which yes. is great. And uh, Stuart, can you describe a specific instance where your unique blend of scientific methodology and business acumen played a crucial role in transforming a struggling business or a propelling startup towards significant growth and success? Yeah, I, I'm, I've always been aware that my thinking is somewhat different to some of those that I've been in business with because I found most of the people were accountants or lawyers and with more traditional roots into business than myself. And I always, I always was the one that was found myself asking why at key moments because that's what scientists do. You get something that happens and you ask the question why. So why did that happen? What was going on there? Um, one business I was uh, was was involved with was led by a very very clever scientist uh, who developed a potential solution to stop mm-hmm. heat from the sun coming in and causing major rises in internal temperatures of buildings. Um, we hit a problem where one customer who had an obvious need for our product, who was a, a really key win to unlock a major growth market, just wasn't keen to buy after a meeting. Everyone had a reason. We sort of got together as a team and everyone had a reason why this was. But I was the one that kept saying, why? When somebody would say, well, such and such happened. And I go, well, well, why? And I kept using that why about four or five times. And it's a a strategy I've used a lot. You know, you ask why until you eventually get to the real root cause. Because normally when you ask why, there is an answer. But that's not the end of the story. You have to ask why again. Somebody will say, you know, well, it was because the sun was shining in the wrong direction. Well, why? Why, why, did, why did we meet in that room? What, what was going on? So we got down to it. And eventually when we reached the answer, we the, the answer that came back to me from one of the team was, I'm not really sure that we were able to explain to them the benefits of the product. And that was the key moment because nobody had sort of had, had, had said that at any stage. Nobody had said that, that we hadn't explained the benefits of the product properly. So I went back to that prospect and I explained the science to them and I explained it to them in such a way that I knew they'd understand because one of the things that I brought from that particular side of me was the fact that I understood the science behind this product, but I was also, mm. I, I was also able to, to, to explain it to them in, in English, whereas the very clever scientist who's leading the company kept using big posh words that he just, you know, they didn't understand. So I I became aware of putting myself in their shoes and explaining to them in their language and making sure that communication is what they did. You know, we all say we've communicated a lesson, but we haven't until the person hearing it has responded and has acted upon it. So communication becomes what the listener or the receiver of the information does. So I I really Mm -hmm. sort of went back to them and I explained what was going on and they they sort of said, OK, I get it. Uh, yeah, we really do actually need that. So we got the sale. And I think that was where I sort of learned that my my science background enabling me to sort of do the, the questioning to get to the root cause so that you can make progress. But then using my knowledge of science to explain things to people and communicate 
but recognizing that communication is what the receiver of the information does, not what you do is is most important. Does that, I don't know if that helps you, Naveen, but that's kind of one, it, one story I could give you. No, it, it, it helps because it is also similar to 5i technique that we use in the yes. Lean Six Sigma methodology and I could completely resonate with you. And in fact, you guys as scientists also, you have that curiosity and that innate ability which helps you find the root cause and also come up with some great invention. So it is completely uh, a, a, a wonderful answer and uh, resonated with me so well. So now let's shift gears and talk okay. about the lessons you learned as a scientist and which are helping you mentor a CEO today. Yeah. So I mean, the first thing I often see uh, with a CEO is, is I often talk to them about critical thinking. Um, mm -hmm. You know, scientists are trained to think critically, uh, analyze data objectively, and make really informed decisions. And, and it's a skill that's, that can be really valuable in mentoring a CEO as it helps in evaluating different strategies and identify potential risks and making sound business decisions. So I, I'm often talking to them about whether or not they've got the critical thinking skills they need because too often a CEO has to make very fast judgments, but they need to make those judgments having thought through all the potential downsides of a decision. And then uh, problem solving. You know, uh, one of the things that we scientists encounter are complex problems that require quite creative and innovative solutions. So the ability to approach a challenge with a problem-solving mindset can be really beneficial. Um, the the, the, the problem-solving is often guided by the fact that you need to step outside of a solution mentally to see all of the, all of the facets. Too often, mm -hmm. CEOs are really in the middle of the problem and can't see all the moving parts. So getting them to step outside and look at a problem from the whole and once again, using the sort of the five Y technique in order to get back to the real root cause is really important. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm often talking to the CEOs about is adaptability. Scientists understand the importance of adapting to new information as it becomes and changes and and new and emerging technologies we, we we you know science is about being comfortable with the uncertain it's about constantly saying don't know what's happening there let's develop a theory as to what's happening and test that theory so being adaptable to a situation we've just been through a, a global pandemic when things were constantly adapting and you could not say that you knew everything about it from the beginning of that pandemic. We had to test. We had to find out new information. So being adaptable and changing, and this is where flexibility and agility are absolutely critical to most CEOs today, to adapt and make sure that they are driving their business forward through these very dynamic business environments. So CEOs have to be hugely adaptable in that respect. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the, the final two I'll give you are, are scientists uh, are continuously learning. It's a, a field that is constantly evolving, it's constantly moving, and change. so we have to stay up to date. And I said this to you at the beginning about ev constantly evaluating the, the the field around me. I'm spending all of my life looking at all of the things that are moving and constantly trying to learn from those situations. I spend a lot of my time trying to sort of dive into new things and say, what can I make use of by looking at new technologies, whether they be AI or new ways of sort of, uh, of, of, of managing people? How do I learn and bring that into my current thinking? And then I, I talked to you about my, my early lessons of learning to work with teams, collaboration and communication. We work in big teams. I worked in some very interesting teams when I was um, a young scientist. And and what I learned was that the experience to effective uh, of, of effectively communicating within those teams, but also as I demonstrated with with customers, effectively communicating, knowing that communication is what the listener does, not what you do. So unless mm -hmm. you communicate effectively and somebody takes action, you have achieved nothing. So talking mm. to CEOs about the fact that they have to ensure somebody has actually understood what they've told them and they've acted upon it. And until that moment, they've done nothing. And that's what collaboration and communication is all about to me. So mm -hmm. my, my, it's helpful to, to bring all of those sort of things in. But, you know, effective mentoring requires 
an understanding and specific needs and challenges of the CEO and their organization. So adapting yep. all of that to the specifics of the person, to the specifics of the situation is, is absolutely critical. Hmm. Amazing. I think these are like uh, nuggets of wisdom and uh, flowing thought by thought and it is extremely helpful. Let's move forward and talk about the secrets of innovating. Like what mm. do you guys do? What's the secret behind innovation? So I'm going to go back to that for, that last one that I just sort of talked about. And, you yeah. know, curiosity. Uh, we started with it. The very first word you used at the beginning of this podcast, curiosity. Cultivate a mindset of curiosity and a thirst for knowledge. You know, that was the one thing that uh, stood me out uh, amongst my, uh, my, my school friends. I was the one that was constantly wanting to learn uh, mm. and spent all of my time doing that. I did, did also do some sports and things like that. But I was constantly wanting to learn. I was open-minded, uh, being open to new ideas. That's absolutely critical to innovations. Embrace change. Be willing to adapt your strategies and approaches as needed. Collaborate. Uh, foster an environment that encourages collaboration and embraces uh, diverse perspectives. Engage with others who have got different backgrounds, experiences, expertise to generate fresh ideas if you don't have uh different people around you work to have different people around you you cannot have a team that looks just like you you need different genders different races different backgrounds in order to have a different perspective on situations problem solving uh you know most innovation comes from a problem that you've got to solve so you have to have that drive to solve a problem uh, look for opportunities to solve existing problems address unmet needs and and use the problem to spark your thoughts to sort of get the next big thing out um the other thing that i think is important in innovation is risk taking uh, you you f you risk failing but people look at failure as some sort of thing to be ashamed of. I look at failure as something to be proud of because mm -hmm. a baby does not learn to walk by just continually sitting on their bottom. A baby learns to walk by getting up and risking falling down, but thinking that that's not what they're going to do next time. They're just going to get up and give it another go. And too often we look at failure as a something which is we've done wrong, but actually failure can be Now, there's a there's a range of reasons why fail we, people fail but failure because of an experiment which we have looked to try and make progress is not a failure failure is just an opportunity to learn and use as an opportunity to next time try something different mm. and then i guess the last thing that i'd say is is innovation has to be user centric it has to be something where you are using your or focusing your understanding on the needs and preferences of a target audience or a customer and addressing the problems they've got and then using that problem once again to solve their problem. Uh, I speak a lot to uh, to CEOs who sometimes um, who, who, who are lost in their own uh, thinking and I come back to the same question, okay, how will this help the customer? How will you explain to them how it makes their lives better? And unless they can actually give a simple answer to that, I don't believe they've solved our problem. So it's about innovation making being a continuous process. It, too many think it just happens once or in special circumstances. It doesn't. It's a process mm -hmm. which you can really embed in your organization. It's something which everyone does and can be involved in, even the cleaners. And, and it requires dedication, perseverance, and a real willingness to challenge the status quo. And I constantly say to people, don't think it's once It is a process. It has to be embedded in the organization. And don't ever throw away an idea from somebody because you never know where that idea is going to go from. Hmm. Excellent, Stuart. Now, let's also talk about the secrets of low-cost marketing to oh. bootstrap your business. I think this is the most anticipated question from our startup enthusiasts. Even I'm very curious to know this answer from you. Okay. Okay. So, first thing I'd say is really make sure that you are talking to your defined target audience you know too many businesses i know when i speak to them and say um 
who is this who is your audience or who is your target client your perfect client they'll say oh this product can work for anyone you know that is the wrong answer always have a very specific person in mind because it makes it easiest to understand what their problem is and then you can target your messaging and target your sales opportunity at that problem and then you know once you've got that person in mind you need to just reach out to them and and one of the cheapest ways that i found just recently is 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 using things like letters and emails people people actually no longer receive physical mail and they do quite like getting it so i've started going back to physical mails uh because physical mails are actually quite effective um Mm. and if they are written to the right person they can be really effective Uh, referral programs uh, encourage existing customers to refer your business to others really cheap mm. reach out to people who have got similar but but uh, um, a, 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 something which is complementary to you reach out to them and suggest joint ways of promoting each other's businesses costs very little normally benefits both businesses very much and and look within your local area collaborate with other local businesses and organizations once again local businesses working together can be really really effective and and mm-hmm. the one thing that i am always very keen on and it's very cheap to do uh in fact i was doing a blog post about this yesterday which will be published in a couple of uh, weeks time on my uh, on my blog is is about making use of customer testimonials you know if you reach out and do things like giveaways or prizes in response for a customer testimonial or if you ask people to recommend your product or 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 give it five stars on 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 Google or Instagram or something like that in ex- exchange for a small giveaway that can be hugely effective for getting your product mm-hmm. out to a wider audience with one or two uh, top prizes you can get you can get a lot of people go, going for it for a very small cost of one of your products or 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 a free session uh, or a free appearance on a podcast something like that um, use use those sort of uh, opportunities to get your customers, your target audience, to get involved in your yep. campaigns in order to get you uh, further notification to the world. Yeah, I, I think these are actionable and affordable at the same time. So thank you for sharing them. Now let's talk about the leadership and the management. Especially when you are building a startup, I think you have to be a good manager. So what, in your opinion, or the four key skills a good manager needs to know so i talk to my uh, mentors uh, mentees about four things first is how to give mm-hmm. feedback uh, that can really improve their behaviors and engagement with their work learn how to properly give that feedback and normally that's a very short sentence something along the lines of if you don't mind me demonstrating it naveen at the moment hey naveen when you started this podcast with such a wonderful well, a wonderful set of questions that really set us off on a good track. Thanks for doing that for me. Or if you want to correct something, say, hey, Naveen, uh, when you came in late to the meeting today, that disturbed the flow of the meeting. Could you do something about that for me next time? It doesn't take more than a few seconds and it needs to be done as often as you're as often as you're in the in the room with those people. Um, mm. Then ha- learn how to have a really good one-to-one with your employees for 30 minutes every every week or two weeks. Ensure they're on track with their work and have an opportunity to monitor their skills and work on with them for improving their skills. It also gives you an opportunity to get to know them because if you're going to ask them to work, work late one night, you really need to understand them as a person to do it. Then Mm -hmm. learn the correct way. And this is the top tip for most executives. Learn the correct way to delegate work to your employees so that they can deal with the work that they can do. And you only do the work that you have to do. You spend too much time as an executive doing work that you shouldn't be doing. Learn how to delegate that properly. And that frees up 50, 60, 70 percent of your time to do only the stuff that you can do. And then the fourth thing is learning how to coach your staff to greater and greater performance. And that's the key to being a great manager. Mm, Excellent, uh, Stuart. And this has been fabulous and an incredible conversation so far. And it's time for us to add some excitement. Okay. So as we dive into a series of second rapid fire round questions. So if you're ready, let's get started. (laughs) <laughs> okay here comes the first bullet if you could have okay. one gigantic yeah if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it what would it say time is non-refundable use it with intention <laughs> superb 
And what is one thing you are really bad at that you wish you were better at? Interviews. No, you are fabulous. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> okay. So can you describe yourself in just one word? Experienced. I've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. Wow. And what is your favorite thing about living in the current times, the 21st century? Um, improvement in health un- out- health outcomes. We we live longer, better, healthier lives. What's not the love about that? Mm. And uh, given a chance to choose between invisibility versus super strength, which one would you pick and why? Oh, invisibility. I- I'd love the ability to avoid all those who I don't want to find me when I'm really, really busy. Mm. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Here comes the last bullet out of rapid fire rounds to what? What is one electronic gadget or a fantasy ga- gadget? that you'd like to see or invent yourself? Do you know, the Star War, the, the, the Star Trek teleporter, I need to get to a lot of places quickly and travel can be really too much of a barrier. Mm. <laughs> I think this is one of the most desired uh, technology uh, yeah. which is anticipated <laughs> amongst people, by people at this moment. And uh, Stuart, that's a great rapid fire, uh, the second one, and let's be back to the mainstream. So given your extensive experience in working with established brands as well as innovation-driven startups. Please share a notable challenge you faced while mentoring or consulting for a growth-hungry startup and how your scientific approach to business helped in overcoming that challenge, ultimately contributing to their commercial success. So, you know, a really vital discipline for any scientist is to ensure work is repeatable. That's the the basis of scientific research. So I've developed my scientific value building machine. That's what I call the approach I use. Uh, It's been designed to really help plan and execute uh, plans to make secure investments so that you develop and design new, um, new products develop and manage your team and commercialize those products it, 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 it allows you to to gen to continuously generate leads and, and land those leads um, I, I I'm a business owner that I'm taking them through that approach at the moment and I'm working with it's, it's one small original founder he's gone from one original founder uh, and one's one part-time assistant to 20 million dollars a year mm. in turnover. And the only way to do that is to make the whole business operate as if it's on autopilot and so make it scale. Because mm. if the owner is at the center, if you don't have systems, processes in place to make it repeatable work that scales, you cannot <clears throat> keep growing your business. And and that's what we've been doing through the last few, uh, few months. It's turning his business from an operation that needed him at the center of it all the time to a scalable business that just constantly flows on autopilot that I have told him his job is to get to the point where he only has to come into the business one Wednesday afternoon a month in order to check it's all still working and then he succeeded. And that's the point at which we very nearly got to. He's reached 20 million. He's very close to the end. Superb. Kudos to your efforts and... That's so great and congratulations on that success and wish you and your clients many more success. And I love this conversation and it is truly an amazing interview. Now it's your turn to share your feedback and how is your experience being hosted on the Guiding Voice platform? Is there anything that I can improve? I mean, it's been a brilliant conversation. You've uh, you've asked some interesting questions, and I'll be honest, <laughs> they've made me think. Uh, that's good. That's a really good thing. No, you, it's been a really interesting conversation. Love to I'd love to see how you uh, you take the guiding voice forward. It's a great idea. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stuart, and really appreciate you taking time and uh, joining this conversation to share your amazing insights and on this. Uh, At this juncture, I would also like to thank uh, Stephen Robin, my mentee, who has really suggested you as a guest speaker. And I really appreciate Stephen. Keep up the good work. You have been recommending some wonderful uh, people to this podcast. And uh, Stuart, I really appreciate every bit of the conversation. And also, I'm looking forward to many more in future. So wish you all the best on your all endeavors. Good. It's good to have talked, Naveen. I'm looking forward to many more of these. Yeah, absolutely. So friends, that was our episode with Stuart Webb. And before we jump into the fun trivia section, we have a quick request. If you haven't already subscribed to the Guiding Voice podcast, 
please subscribe from wherever you have tuned in because subscribing keeps you updated on new episodes and also if you have enjoyed this episode and found the conversation useful please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who would also like tgv the guiding voice so please spread the knowledge and help others grow just like you now let's cruise into the trivia segment of today's episode so today we had an amazing scientist to turn mentor or a business mentor joining our conversation i thought i would share a few more facts related to scientists who were great leaders and here comes the first profile carl sagan an astrophysicist and cosmologist and science communicator sagan has played a significant role in popularizing science through books and television shows like cosmos and public speaking engagements Sagan's leadership was characterized by his ability to engage the public with complex scientific concepts and promote scientific understanding as well as critical thinking. And second one is about Dr. May Jemison. Dr. Jemison is a physician, engineer and a former NASA astronaut, becoming the first African American woman to travel to space in 1992. and she demonstrated uh, leadership by breaking barriers in space exploration and advocating for diversity and inclusion in stem fields so likewise if you are aware of any scientists come leaders please share about them and what you admire the most about them so feel free to comment if you are watching it on youtube or if you have found this episode on social media platforms you can comment there as well i am going to review them in future and that's it for today's episode Thank you so much for taking time to tune into our podcast and also for being part of our awesome community folks we would love to hear from you so do not hesitate to share your ideas feedback topic recommendations or guest speaker suggestions either through our social media platforms or through our email address the guiding voice for you at redgmail.com i am your host navin samala a lifelong learner and my goal is to have impactful conversations that improve not only your life but also your career until next time Take care stay inspired and remember the future holds great things because the best is yet to come goodbye for now see you all in the next episode with another amazing guest take care